No, that's just disrespectful. What do you mean disrespectful? I'm sorry for my misunderstanding. I think you're going too far because she came up here respectfully and asked and had a normal conversation with you. You trying to force people into certain beliefs is what's separating. Not you trying to steal her bag and think it's- So this Hindu and this woke lady try to debunk Cliff and it's absolutely amazing. So I can't wait to get into this and it's just an amazing conversation. So let's get right into it. Well, who is God? You said he's love. I'm not like saying he's, but I'm not trying to even put it into like a human term. Like it's not, it's like it. It. It's like it. energy. Okay, how does energy love? Energy Do you have a loving relationship love. with electricity? Energy is love. Energy is love. <laughs> is electricity love? Is nuclear power love? No, the energy is Well, then what are you talking about? World. What do you mean? How do you explain God? Very simple. God is a personal being, not an it. God is not electricity. God is a personal being who has a mind who created us. Making it a personal being turns him human. And no. humanity isn't divine. He's a spiritual being. He's not a human. Okay, so how do you define a spiritual being? Is that not energy? Is that not karmic energy like in the world? No. It's not electricity. Okay, I didn't say electricity. I said energy. What do you mean energy? Like, okay, so you just Life? 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 Life is energy. It's Good. a form of energy. God is a living being. Absolutely correct. God is a living being. In that sense, God is very energetic. No question about yeah. it. Yeah. I mean, yeah, but like, it's not like he is someone you can have, like, form a relationship. Like, I'm well, not. How do you know that? How do you know you can't have a relationship with God? But that's my truth. I don't, I can't have is a relationship. Is it possible that your truth is wrong? Is it possible my truth is wrong? That's, that's what makes it a belief. And that's why I'm saying this whole thing is a belief. And you, like, trying to convince people that it's, like, a truth is kind of going past the the obvious explanation that it is just a belief oh and it's your i am truth, so sorry my truth. i thought we were on a university campus that is committed to the liberal arts education which is based on the idea that we all have different philosophies different beliefs and what an education is is a free exchange of ideas where we begin to challenge each other and ask each other what's the evidence that what you believe is true so you're doing that's where i thought we were at a university i didn't know we were at a place that says it doesn't matter what you believe because everything is true I thought we were in a place where a professor said, that answer's wrong. And if you don't learn to study and get in touch with reality, truth, you're going to flunk out of this place. I am so sorry I'm under this misconception that we're in a university where a liberal arts education, the free exchange of ideas, the questioning and challenging each other, what do you believe and why do you believe it? I thought that's what this place was all about. I'm so sorry no, for my I misunderstanding. I think you're going too far because she came up here respectfully and asked and had a normal conversation with you. No, I think... Yeah, and I'm respecting her and answering exactly what she's raising, and I'll listen to you and answer you exactly what you raise. So just and that's called it, intellectual respect. Just to make it here, you're you're here, like, just to make it clear, you're here on behalf of UT as if this is an educational exchange. No, I've been invited here by Chi Alpha Christian Fellowship, a group of UT students. I've been invited here by that group to speak here, to dialogue. Okay, so you were invited. Yes. You're not just here like a random crazy person, like, <laughs> just preaching. For no well, reason. Well, I have great respect for random people who come and talk. That's yeah, they're right. We have free speech in this country, guys. All right? So there's nothing wrong. It's not me. But you're on a schedule, is what I'm just trying to say. Yeah, I got a flight to New York City tomorrow morning at 826. That's correct. I'm on a schedule. All right. All right. Wonderful. <laughs> now, why don't you believe in Jesus Christ? I just... Why you mean like the human form of, of God? Yeah, he claimed to be God in human form. So why don't you believe in Jesus? It's just not scientifically feasible enough for me to put all my faith and follow and like go to church for it. It's not my really? belief. It's not true to me. Why? I was raised up Catholic, went to Catholic private school, and it wasn't right. until I went to that private school that right. I realized it was all bull in my eyes. What's your evidence? Because it's based on a story that has no scientific truth. It doesn't reach me at a level where I'm like, oh my gosh, this is like perfect. Like, this is it. It's just personally not connected. Okay, fine. Science That's crazy that she's just like... There's just not enough scientific proof for me to believe in Jesus. One of the worst explanations for not believing in Jesus is is saying that there's not enough scientific proof for Jesus. Like, what do you even mean by that? There's no formula in the Bible. There's no, there's nothing for us to, to just be like, yes, we need to prove this. 
This is a historical book. The writings of Jesus is meant to be written down as a, a history thing, something that took place. Just like any other historical figure like Abraham Lincoln. Now we can't scientifically prove that Abraham existed, but there's a lot of historical evidence for him existing. There's places where he used to live. There's monuments. There's lots of things for Abraham Lincoln. Just like that, there are a lot of monuments and historical evidences, writings for Jesus. They proved to me that George Washington was the first president of the United States. Can you do that scientifically? I mean, this has to be some type of fallacy because he wrote accounts. Did Jesus actually write anything down? No, I don't believe George Washington was first president of the United States because a dude named George Washington wrote something. Eyewitnesses saw George, and they wrote down what they saw. Eyewitness he testimony. Wrote stuff. He yeah, wrote he wrote stuff. stuff, yes. Wait, wait, did Jesus? Sorry. No, Jesus did not write anything. The eyewitnesses who saw him wrote what they saw. Jesus spoke. Those who heard him wrote down what he spoke. Like about 2,000 years later, it no. wasn't an eyewitness. No, yes, it was. We have Greek manuscripts, ma'am, from the early second century that clearly point to the fact that we have an accurate account of what Jesus said in the first century. So what's, what's wrong with other people's religions' truths that have real accounts of it? Like Judaism. Yeah, what about it? So why are you different from Judaism? Why are you different from Hindu? Like, right. Why are there different? That's what's separating people. You trying to force people into certain beliefs is what's separating. People. Not you trying to steal her bag and think it's a moral compass and alienation and isolation. I mean, I know you're not forcing anyone. You're just Thank trying you. to spread. Thank you. That was incredibly here. judgmental. <laughs> to say that. I'm, glad, I'm glad you caught yourself on that. But one. why? Like, does anyone else from other faiths like do this? Like, the fact that it's always Christians is kind of like it's kind of a red flag, and I think it just kind of puts you guys. <laughs> You've got to be kidding me. It's true. You don't I think, think Muslims share their, that. spread their belief? I mean, like, you don't yelling think Muslims to kids on spread this their campus? belief? Yelling to kids on this campus? You don't think no. atheists spread their belief? Yelling to people on this campus? No. I can promise you, I can promise you there are atheists who spread their faith very effectively at UT Austin. Yeah. We have who, no, who's seen no atheists yelling at people here? No, there is no other faith on Speedway besides Christianity. Okay, well then why don't you stand up and talk about Hinduism? Because I don't feel the need to. Yeah, she got her truth figured out. She doesn't care if other people see her truth or not. Yeah. Because she knows no, she's being the best person she can All right. be. Well then it's real simple. And it doesn't come down to a faith. Ma'am, if you suddenly have a seizure, I'm not just going to stand here and say, oh, too bad, you got a seizure. I'm going to call 911. I'm going to get the best doctor That's to try and you. heal you. That's good. Not only am I going to do that, but if I'm convinced that Jesus Christ offers you eternal life in heaven, then because I love you, and if you have a seizure, I'm going to call 911. That's an expression of my love for you. So I'm going to seek to communicate to you. Jesus offers you eternal life. Why don't you check him out? So why is that your, why is that the thing that's pushing you to help people? Love. Because I am convinced that God created us to love mm -hmm. each other. That's but that's so, yeah. a secondary source that's forcing your actions. That's not just you loving me because I'm alive right here. I love you because God created us for the purpose of loving each other. That's why I love you. So I don't care if you're my enemy. I'm going to love you. If you're, if you're um, I absolutely love his answer because at the end of the day, what people don't realize is that people who follow Jesus love you so much that they're willing to make almost like a fool of themselves to like go out of their way and get embarrassed or feel uncomfortable or do something that doesn't benefit them at all. But because they love you so much, they want to to tell you about Jesus. Jesus is the one that can absolutely transform your life. We've seen it. The atheist, Ian talked about how she truly is in her best place because of what Jesus did in her life. And Alex O'Connor literally said, it's, there's no denying how much you have changed for the better because of what Jesus is doing in your life. We know what Jesus can truly do. He can set you free he can make you into a new creation. He gives you purpose like no other. And that's why having a relationship with Jesus 
matters so much, and that's why Christians want everyone to know about him. Enemy, if you try and hurt me, I'm still going to try and love you. Why? Because I'm convinced that God created us to love each other. Yeah. And if God created us to love each other, then that means regardless of how difficult it is to love each other, we're still going to try and love each other if we're followers of Christ. I see. I recognize like that's your truth. But if if I do the same thing to someone, if you're having a seizure and I choose to help you, yes. Why am I wrong? Because my my like the thing that made me do that isn't what Jesus wants. Why is it wrong for me to just be loving because I feel like based on my past experiences in this life, that's what I want to do to be a good person. Why does it have to be? Because this is what Jesus wants. Because this is what Jesus says. Every time it... that you love, that is good. Exactly. Regardless of what you believe, every exactly. time you love. So but speaking I... for myself, I can't speak for you, but speaking for myself, I have not always loved. I am a sinner. Me neither. Okay. I'm, I have violated God's purpose in creating me, which is to love God and to love people. Therefore, I need God's forgiveness. I also need his help to love my enemy. Because to be very honest with you, too frequently, not all the time, but too frequently, I want to cut my enemy off at the knees. <laughs> and that's wrong of me. All right? So that's why I need to ask God for forgiveness and for the power to change so that I can love even my enemy. Yeah. Well, the fact, I'm not saying that you're weak for needing that extra help or anything, but I think but that's are. why faith and, like, religion is so easy to follow for humans that have no idea why we're here. We're all clueless at the end of the day. We don't really know what's going to happen right when we die, and we can all say that, or else we're, we're naive. And what, I think What is religion, love and who defines it? And I think that religion makes it easy because it hands truth to us. What is love? You've talked a lot about love. And find truth what is love own. and who we defines love? Hand it to us through a Bible. What is love and who defines it? Because I got a lot, I know a lot of guys who have a very definite definition of what it means to love you. You're yeah, a very beautiful you. woman, and I can promise you, I got a lot of guys who can tell me very clearly what it means to love you, and it ain't pretty, okay? So who defines love? If it's just a personal thing, you've got your personal trip, I can promise you I got a lot of guy friends who got their definition of what it means to love you, a beautiful woman, and it ain't pretty. So what makes your definition of love more correct than their definition of love? Well, it's not the definition of love. It's the moral compass that someone builds up as they uh -huh. have more past experiences. And why life. is your moral compass more correct than their moral compass? I'm not compass? saying it is. We're saying oh, come on. You know very well that if some guy says to love means to use you sexually, they are wrong. That's evil. They're, they're Don't unethical. you believe that? Don't you believe that? They're unethical. They're uh -huh. Okay, so who defines ethics? Who defines goodness? And who defines love? Well, that's a whole philosophical question. That it's a very practical question, ma'am. When you go down the ethical, philosophical questions, that's what brings you down to the road to Christianity. Because Jesus solves the ethical question. He essentially writes the moral compass. He writes it on our hearts. He said it on the Sermon on the Mount. The Beatitudes, all of that, love your neighbor as yourself, even though they hate you. And that's what's amazing about Christianity because when it really boils down to it, when you really think what's good and what's evil, the Bible got it right. If you say there is no God and it doesn't come from the Bible or from God, it's literally up to anyone's opinion what's right and wrong. Just like, like what Cliff is saying. Then if a creep thinks it's the best thing in the world to abuse a woman, then you can't tell them that it's wrong. It's just their opinion. But if there's a higher order, someone who's making up the morals and the, and the ethical problems and the rules, then you can say, wait a minute. It's not just because I say it's wrong. It's because God says it's wrong. It's an incredibly practical question. What is question. your answer besides God to that? Yeah, what's your answer many, many besides this is what Jesus the answer said? Of God. You're, it's so easy for you to stand here because you can say, Jesus Everything told me this. Like, Jesus said this. It's so easy to yeah, have once have I done that to you, but it's amazing the way you parrot that. You're attacking a straw man, man. Now, why don't you listen to me as I try to listen to you and respond to me, not respond to a straw man. I never said, just do something because Jesus says it. It's not my argument. My argument is your experience of love 
as a real value. Your firm conviction that those guys who define love as being to sexually use you, they are wrong, really wrong. Why? Because there is such a thing as real love that they are violating. The, now you've got to ask yourself, real love? Who defines real love? And if there is no God, there's no objective love. I'm not saying there's no God. Okay, fine, but just listen. I'm if there is no God, we're not saying there's no God. No, my argument is the fact that we're not saying that there's not a God. We're just saying that it doesn't always have to be Jesus, like in the form of like Christian. Okay, fine. So who is God? I mean, like I'm a Hindu, no one so I have different like, beliefs. Who is God for you? I mean, like, we have multiple that take the same form. We have multiple gods. Okay, so if I say God is the lamppost, is that true? <laughs> no, that's just disrespectful. What do you mean disrespectful? If I believe that the lamppost is part of God, don't tell me that's disrespectful. That's what I believe. No, no, I thought you were talking about Hinduism being like the No, I didn't say that. If I, if I, Cliff, believe the lamppost is God, that's you, have a, you. you have a problem with that. No, you disagree. Do you agree with me that lamppost is God? I respect your belief that that is God is the lamppost, but that's not my belief. Okay. Then if you believe that God is not the lamppost, would you try and help me see that the lamppost is not God? Or would you just say, go ahead, Cliff, believe the lamppost is God? I mean, that's no, what religion is today. Like, you believe in Christianity. I'm not going to come and try yeah. to be like, oh, like, you need to believe Hinduism, Hinduism, Hinduism. Well, what are you doing out saying. here talking to me? <laughs> you, why are you here then? Why are you here? <laughs> we see what you were talking about. We go yeah, and then, good, and you started talking. Yeah, I'm But let's be real honest. You disagree with me. Well, I'm, okay, I'm, and that's fine. But let's star. not try and act like you don't disagree with me. Because you know very well. Everyone knows I'm here because I don't agree with you. Exactly. And, that, and I respect that. That's fine. But let's not start getting on your high horse telling me that because I believe Jesus is the truth, oh, that's some type of narrow-minded, bigoted view. It's because you have your truth, and I have my truth. And I'm, I'm trying to dialogue with you. What's the evidence that your truth is right? Okay, well, I think both of us are safe to say that we're curious why it's like people are always here preaching. We're I don't know curious. why other people come out here and preach. I, don't know, I know why I do. I don't know why. It's the same I, reason I'm, for all of y'all. Yeah, no, look, it's not. Don't generalize like that. It's That's just as bigoted as if I were to say to you, you both are stuff. motivated by the week. same thing. I don't know you ladies. I've got to respect you as an individual. And not just say all preachers, all your yeah, teaspoons. Like That's you're wrong. Here. I am here because I love I'm you. Curious. I am. Thank you for asking that question. I'm here because I love you, and I have found that Jesus Christ is totally reliable. Which means for if you, you. Is a, for you. No, let us in. Thank you. Because the evidence of the way Jesus lived, taught, died, and rose from the dead points to his trustworthiness. I'm concerned that you not trust someone who's going to ditch you, who's going to fail you. Jesus Christ was dead, he rose from the dead, therefore I'm convinced he can help you with the fact that you're going to die. He can help you in a way that nobody else can, that I've ever been exposed to. So therefore, because I love you, and I use the illustration, if you had a seizure, if she had a seizure, I would try and call 911, so I'm convinced that you and I both have dates with death. Therefore, if Jesus Christ is able to give us eternal life, and if I claim to love you, I'm going to tell you. The same way if you get cancer, ma'am, and I know a doctor who can cure your cancer, I don't love you if I don't tell you about that doctor. Okay, but like if everyone is walking around like I have a different faith, do you believe that just because we don't follow Christianity that we're all just like on a different path, like we're not going to heaven? Yeah. Are we sinners? Are we in here yeah. as sinners because we don't believe? Like we have no, we're all sinners. This girl right here is always just like against Christianity and it's because she was a Catholic and now she's not apparently. And this girl seems to be more interested than Hindu. And I think at the end of the day, one is trying to find excuses to not follow God and the other one is just having a hard time with that other religions can't get to heaven. But if you really understand what does Jesus tell you and say in the Bible, he says that he is the way, the truth, and the life, and no one can go to the Father except through him. So that means only through Jesus you can get to heaven. So therefore, either he's right or he's wrong. Either Jesus is right and you only can get to heaven through Jesus, 
or he's wrong and the Hindu person, the Hindu religion is right. I don't know. I believe that Jesus is the only way. Bell against God because we don't love God and love others the way he created us to. So I'm a sinner. I'm number one sinner out here, okay? But separate from that, like, what? So if someone is not a Christian, what is their path in life, like, after they die? All right, why don't you answer that, Stuart? Wait, what was, sorry, what was the last one? No, it's just that if someone is, like, not a Christian, like, what do you think happens, like, after they die? After they die, if they're not a Christian? Yeah, because we were talking about, like, eternal life, like, heaven, like, everything. Right. What you, like, what do you do then? I'll answer that from a Christian perspective, then you can answer from a Hindu perspective. Yeah, I'm just curious. Yeah, so from a Christian perspective, it's all about giving up yourself and worshiping God, because we all worship in some kind of way, yeah. some kind of thing, right? I mean, the best fiction writer probably in the last hundred years who wrote Infinite Jest gave a, Ke a Kenyan college address where he said, we all worship something. If it's something on this earth, it will eat you alive, whether it's relationships, money, you name it. Mm -hmm. So we believe in Jesus Christ. We believe in God outside of us. We, by accepting God, we em empty ourselves grow a trusting relationship with Christ, and that is how you have eternal life with him. But that does not mean somebody over in India who's never heard the name of Jesus Christ is going to hell. Because no, no, yeah, I get that. I get that. You get that, okay. Yeah. So from a Hindu perspective, see, I think you should be out here, maybe not with the same kind of voice as him because you guys are slightly hardwired differently, <laughs> but I do think sometimes you should maybe be on this corner. But that or... makes a great point. Thank you for talking out oh, yeah. here. I appreciate it a lot, okay? <laughs> yeah. But I do think, because I have some Hindu friends, and I've been to their homes, and I've, I've had conversations with two different women who said to me, we're in different caste systems, and so one is slightly more valuable than the other. And it was a very awkward conversation. But I think for you to love me would be to come out here and say, hey, Stuart, you have a slightly bad sense of karma because you've been living a certain way. I want to help you not come back as a cockroach. So you're, I'm going to help you and communicate what a good type of lifestyle is according to the Hindu faith, rather than just saying, don't push your faith on somebody because that's considered proselytizing. Yeah. Well, by claiming not to push your faith on somebody, that's also a form of proselytizing. Maybe it's a form of quieter proselytizing, but see this sweet woman right here, I am very impressed by her, and yet the same thing that she was doing, she was basically calling him intolerant for the way he was communicating an exclusive truth. She was co communicating an even more intolerant, exclusive truth because she was saying she had this kind of 30,000 view of all religions and that they are either the same or that they should not be communicating their truth in a certain way when 87% of the world is making exclusive truth claims about their own religions. So what's more yeah. exclusive and intolerant? What's more inclusivity than the low percentage of people who think that any way could get to heaven compared to the 87% of all religions think that there is some truth and that those truths is the right way. And he called her out on it. That's absolutely wild. But a lot of people, they, they don't understand how hypocritical it is to say, you can't push your religion on other people. Therefore, they're pushing their own opinions on the Christian for pushing their opinions. It's just like a, a roundabout circle. My thing is like, okay, so you guys are like out here like preaching, like spreading the word. Like I get the root. Hopefully not preaching too much. Okay, no, but no. The, I, want, I want to be PC. Okay, but like spreading the word, okay, we'll say that. But the thing is like, Hinduism is a very accepting religion. Like obviously, like yep. you have to be born into Hinduism, but you can still practice it as a religion. <laughs> like, okay, from I'm thinking from my experience, like how I grew up, nobody like goes around like, I agree, like on, like no one spreads the word like that. Like if someone is interested and want to come, like, the arms are always open, but no one avidly goes out and like spends their time like doing this. Why not? No, but I'm asking like why do you guys? Why aren't you doing that though? If my karma is bad and I'm headed towards being a cockroach or something worse than a cockroach, <laughs> why wouldn't you come and talk to me? But the thing Help is, like, me out of it. Help like, me out of my ignorance. I just don't understand I've had Hindus come up to me and offer different paths than the ones that I'm communicating. Yeah, that's fine, but like, it's just, mm -hmm. I just don't have to So you disagree with the style yeah, of communication? That, yeah, that's my style. Okay, but again, but like, the atheist department at numerous Ivy Leagues, especially Dartmouth right now, has put out different articles in their papers saying, if you are a Christian or another faith that claims some type of eternal existence through their path, you have the moral obligation to be doing this right now. 
That was the Atheist Society at Dartmouth University. I, don't think I, I mean, really that's like their issue. Issue. They're <laughs> being honest. They're saying this is your worldview. If you truly believe that people have are either going to be in heaven or hell and not some vague existence in between, then you better be preaching or at yeah. least communicating in some kind of way this type of truth. That's good. And like I was saying, if you're a Christian, the last thing Jesus said was to go into all the world and preach the gospel. He didn't say you have to travel to the other to other countries to preach the gospel. That means that you could preach the gospel in your neighborhood to the people that you're around. Be a light for Jesus by the way you love each other. Um, if you don't do that, and it's almost like you're not following Christianity. It's almost like you're being more hypocritical by not sharing the love of Jesus. Wouldn't you want people to be authentic and actually practice what they preach? Now, my last piece, well, no, I'm not going to go this All right. No, what is it? It was a question on Hinduism. Good, ask her. Uh, sure, I might remember that name. This is a little bit tougher, a little more direct. So, as, as also a therapist, I'm also a, a mental health therapist, I'll go to the bedside of a person dying. And when I am there, oftentimes I'm thinking about worldviews. Typically it's my own worldviews, my own faith, right? And I'm thinking about a suffering God, Jesus Christ, who is with us in our suffering. He's the only suffering God that I know of. Then I am thinking about something like atheism. If I am an atheist going to the bedside of my dying mother or close friend, see you later. Sorry, you're falling through a trap door into just timeless, spaceless eternity. Take, take care. Depressing versus an eternal existence, falling through a trapdoor into the loving arms of a God, a personal God, is radically different. Now, my Hindu friends, though, I, I also believe have a little bit of a problem when it comes to an understanding of suffering. Hmm. Because it's the one-to-one -one correlation of if my mom drives into a car accident today and dies, there's a one-to-one -one correlation of her doing something wrong that caused her suffering and death. Yeah, I feel like I'm wrong. That's radically different from the Christian faith, yeah. which is not just the suffering God, but it's also there is death, there is confusion, there is all kinds of pain and suffering that typically has nothing to do with your bad deeds. Your bad deeds or bad karma. Okay. Our faith on karma. Right. But do you see how that's problematic? Like that does not fit my experience. When I'm dealing with death and and dying folks to go to them and say sorry you have cancer because you did something wrong whether it was last week yesterday or the day before but the thing is like it's not that minuscule it's like what you've done throughout your life so you know how like you guys are like okay i'm a sinner like i've sinned it's not like oh like i tripped someone yesterday so now i'm gonna go die in a car it's like the accumulation of all the bad deeds that you've done okay but it's still the same thing up to like one moment like okay like i like, okay, you die in a car crash forever. But obviously when that person is dying, you're not going to be like, oh, like, you caused, like, in a way, like, you caused your own... Because everyone has to die, okay? That is, like, obviously the end game. But it's not like... Before... Before she finishes... But it's still the same thing, though. It's accumulative things that happen over the series of your life that cause certain things that happen in the next life. But Jesus says, I can be with you in your suffering. And it's not always because of your wrongdoings. It's because just we live in a sinful world and lots of crazy bad things happen. No one has to die, but when you're on your deathbed, no one's going to be like, oh, like you caused your own death. This is why like it happens for a reason. Like Everything happens for a reason. That is the underlying belief. Oh, yeah. I actually, and I can get on board with that. Yeah. But well, I can't get on board because... with your bad deeds are just accumulated. So you're going to die a worse kind of death. And the person over here, like this sweet little lady, who was saying that she's just living for goodness. So she's not going to suffer, as opposed to the person, perhaps, who grew up an addict, because maybe their parents were addicts, and so they had a type of bad deeds when it came to their alcoholism. So somehow they're going to suffer worse because they're worse people, and let's ostracize them. Versus this sweet lady who's supposedly living for greatness. I mean, not necessarily because you say that, like, your parents are addicts, so you're an addict, and, like, you're like doing drugs, everything yeah, that can be understandable because of the origin that you come from, like your parents. But the thing that's going to cause your karma is the actions you take being that person. It's not necessarily what you start from. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. every person is responsible for their own actions. Just because, like, you may have a tougher background, like, that's obviously taken into consideration. Like, I don't know about that. But what I grew up knowing is that it isn't, it's your personal actions that cause, like, your 
like course for the rest of your life. Like obviously, if you do something good, like something good will happen to you. Or like you're making your own life better. But if you do something bad, then that's gonna catch up. To you. Right. Okay. And I can probably get on board with that. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Sin like, follows us. Romans. 9.18 says, Therefore God has mercy on whom he wants to have mercy, and he hardens whom he wants to harden. When, even though we've sinned and we've all fallen short, God still forgives you of your sins. He loves you so much, he will accept you with open arms. That's what the, the story of the prodigal son is all about. Yeah, there are consequences to your sin, 100%, especially the things that you do to your body. There are consequences, but that doesn't mean God won't forgive you, though. That doesn't mean God won't accept you with open arms. You know, he's not a cop waiting for you to mess up and to strike you down. He's waiting for you to come back to him, and he will accept you with open arms because he loves you so much. Many ways. Yeah, so it's yeah. not from, like, just because it's not like you're written a bad faith. You know what I mean? Like, you can always turn it around. Does that make sense? Right. And yet, at the same time, there is a big difference between grace and forgiveness in the Christian faith versus in the Hindu faith you still are determined by your bad deeds. It's a type of determinism. I mean, yeah, Whether it's are. accumulation of me when I was in high school and I was living a very partying type yeah. lifestyle versus perhaps more so now, I, I don't know, maybe I am better ethically. I mean, that's like, true, like, but in a sense, like, it's also like, just like you guys repent, like you can go to the temple, like you can pray, like there are certain religious rituals that you can do that better your karma but don't erase it you okay I mean? okay so it's not like just because you do this it's in your like permanent record forever like it's etched forever so now you're gonna die like it's not like that okay let's go to the caste system now why did i have that very awkward encounter with those two women who one was higher up than the other the christian faith we were talking about out here yesterday which is everybody it doesn't matter if you have a lower level of awareness or cognitive abilities which i'm probably lower than you and or or you're born with special needs whatever the issue might be we are all creating the image of god absolutely equal we do not have to somehow prove our self-worth prove and get my value by any kind of means necessary instead no matter what our value doesn't change because of what jesus did for us on the cross in my understanding in hinduism that's not the case. Yeah. You are born into a type of caste system where you are better than somebody else yeah. who was born into a different yeah. caste system. Yeah, well, like, to be honest, like, I don't believe in the caste system, so, like, I agree. Okay. In the Christian <laughs> faith, your bad deeds can follow you if you just keep living in sin, making poor decisions, but you're never too late to turn and accept Christ just like the thief on the cross, and Christ turns to him and says, today you will be with me in paradise. Because it's based off of grace versus I got to do all of this white knuckle it on my own and somehow I'll get to heaven. That's why it's so important and the best thing about the Christian faith, the best thing about following Jesus is obviously we're never going to make it to heaven on our own. We never can be perfect. But that's why God sent his one and only son Jesus to die on the cross for our sins so that we can be saved. J.B. Williams says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 1 John 1, 9. Amen. God is love. And 1 Corinthians, 3, 5, uh, 1 Corinthians 13, 5 says, it does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrong. Yeah, I mean, so good. I can't imagine having to work our way to heaven because it's a lost cause. <laughs> it's a lost cause because God is a holy God and we're never going to be able to be holy, be good enough to be in God's presence. But because of Jesus, what he did for us on the cross by receiving that gift, if we confess our sins, he cleanses us from all unrighteousness. That's what J.B. Williams says. Therefore, we are able to make it to heaven, not because of our own work so that we can't boast, but so God's glory will be known. Jesus told him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. So guys, I encourage you to just trust in Jesus and know that he loves you and he is longing to have a relationship with you and put him first so guys in the description below below you can click the link to help you decide to follow jesus for the first time i encourage you to do that today it will be the best decision of your entire life to put god first over everything else